Welcome to this week's Drop and Dimes here on Collider. Uh, I am your host, as always, Matt Nost, and I'm joined by fellow NBA diehard fan, Mr. Mark Fernandez. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? Uh, I'm good. Uh, I'm excited for tonight. Zion is finally going to be playing yeah, yeah, again. Yeah. Uh, they projected it last week, so last week we talked about it on the show, and then they they came out. It was like later that day, and they're like, bah, bah. "What's your over under on the minutes?" Uh, they've got to keep him on a heavy minutes restriction, I uh, assume. I mean, dude, if he plays ten minutes, I'd be shocked. Uh, he'll play ten. You think he'll play ten? He'll play ten. I don't think he'll get into anything above twenty. I would guess. I would guess twelve to twelve to fourteen. You know, light rotations. He doesn't start. He comes in with the second unit. Type and the of thing. Pels are only like four games back from the eighth seed, right? Dude, the West is still. Fairly wide open for those last few spots. Yeah. So the Pelicans have shifted from, you know, hey, we're taking feelers. Worst team in the league. Yeah, we're taking feelers on Drew Holidays. Anybody got interest in potentially J.J. Redick if you sweeten the pot because they got him under a two-year contract to where now the reports are they're not – they're reassessing now that they got Zion back and they want to see what they have because – Brandon Ingram's playing like a borderline all-star. Right. Lonzo's actually put together a string of games where... Playing his best basketball ever. Yes, hands down. So maybe they can actually cobble together and and make a run for the eighth spot. I don't know. Let's see what Zion can do. It'll be super interesting. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully get out of here tonight and make uh, make it home in time to catch the game. Let me ask you a question. Knowing what you know right now... Yes. Okay? If I told you you can redraft that number one spot, are you still sticking with Zion or are you going John Morant? We haven't seen Zion yet. So if the all the reports of they fixed the way he runs and jumps and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, maybe. But a Ja just, I mean, dude, he's got five highlights a night. Right. And as a guard, you know, that frame, he'll be able to play more than likely for 15 years solid if he wants to. All right. So you're saying you would take Ja? I think so, yeah. I think I would take Damn. Ja. What about you? I think I'd take Jaw also, man. I'm very worried about this Zion Williamson kid, man. Dude, when you're that big and you already have health, you know, issues, it's kind of like Embiid. How long does Embiid have when he's already, yeah. you know, because like you have to jump, this. you have to jump in basketball, and, and 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 that's his game. I mean, some players don't jump, but he's got to jump. Well, is he going to be Blake Griffin 2.0? Highly explosive, electrifying, love to watch him, draws fans in, and then now, you know, Detroit just got awarded a disability exception of $9.2 million because Dwight's done for the season, his knees are shot, and who knows if he's ever going to be remotely close to what he was. I mean, he's built, he's gotten a three-point shot, he's pushed his game outwards because you can't just keep barreling into the lane, Right. but when you watch Summer League and preseason, that's all Zion was, I mean... Finishing like nobody's business, getting layup and dunk after layup and dunk. But how do you, how do you manage to do that for an entire career? Nobody's LeBron. LeBron is an anomaly right. at that size that you don't have all these issues and whatnot. So yeah. it's scary. Yeah. So I'm. Um, I think that he's going to play very, very, very limited minutes tonight. Okay. I mean, like, if I'm Griffin. David, David Griffin, right? That was his yeah. guy. Yeah. If I'm him, I'm like, yo, you better not get this guy hurt on the first game. Oh, no, there's no way. You know, it's like the second he f- he says, he walks out like, eh, like, sit, like, you're done. You know, like, show me that you can move around a little bit. Show me you can go back and forth. Show me you can play a little defense. Show me one little torque, cut in, slam dunk, and then, like, sit him. Well, that's that's what he's going to be doing. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to be jump shots. It's not going to be corner threes. It's going to be, hey, go drive on three dudes and somehow manage to finish because you're so massive. Nobody right. can stop you. right. And do it two or three times without getting hurt, and then sit on the bench and let's try it again in the next game. Like I, I'd be, I'd be ultra, ultra careful with the dude. Well, I'll be interested because they announced, you know, like a month ago that he will not play on any back-to-backs whenever he comes back. Right. So will they stick to that, especially if they get into a playoff, you know, hunt? I hope they do because you got to think long-term as opposed to short-term gains. Just like, hey, you know, next year could be even Look, better. And with the trade deadline coming up in two weeks, they they can make a move and grab somebody. I wouldn't do that. Why would you do that? Why would you go out and spend capital when you're currently— Right. Who's out there, though? Uh, that they would want? I'm yeah. not entirely sure. Because you want somebody that's going to be— Kevin Love? Why would you get Kevin Love? Yeah. Andre Drummond? Why would you get Andre Drummond? Yeah. Kyle Kuzma, why would you get Kyle? Would you just going to reunite all the Lakers? <laughs> right, right. But what do you got to give up to get them? Right, like, right. I, I don't know that I would do that. Yeah, I, um, I've i heard some some buzzing about uh, the Pels uh, thinking that they actually have a chance to make a run and that they might try to pair somebody up with the with the return of Zion 
to see if they can really start putting it together. I mean, they got a lot of they got a lot of draft picks. They got a lot of players. They got a lot of you know they got they got ability to move around. Right yeah, now. they can make moves. I just don't I don't know if if it's wise unless you can get complementary players back that are of the same age and on the same timeline and the contracts are you know good. But 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 haven't they been sitting at the second to worst spot in the in, in the West pretty much all season? By and large, they've been floating around, yes, near the bottom yeah. of that West. Just, just above the Warriors. Yeah, but the Warriors are running out a G League team. Oh, man. Although Steph's coming back uh, March 1st is the projected date. Is he actually going to play? Yeah. Because Draymond hasn't been playing, right? No, Draymond's been playing, and he's actually been trying. That's what – because part of me was like, why don't the Warriors just go, oh, Draymond's got an inflamed elbow and he's out, and just keep doing that over and over and over again. Like, he plays a game, it's just like, oh, hurt that elbow. Yeah. We need him to sit out. we got to run more Eric Pascal – and just tank for that, you know, that high draft pick, ship out D'Angelo Russell for whatever you can get for him, something more than likely pretty nice, and mm-hmm. then now you've got, you know, you could make a hell of a run with this team next year. What's what's your theory on why there's been this 28% drop in viewership as of this point last season relative to where we are now? Uh, I think in LeBron Warriors, moving to the West. Okay, because of, because of the time zone difference? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a big deal. Yeah, uh, the, most of the marquee stars that people pay attention to are in the West. Nothing where, against the East. Where but, all the markets are in the East in terms of like the big numbers for yeah, television. Yeah, well, and games start earlier there, whereas the West Coast games, it's super late on the East Coast. Yeah, yeah. And the the best you know two guys available in the East, Kyrie hasn't played much. Uh, he's, and, been, he's been a disaster. Yeah, KD's been out. And, you know, like uh, your guy Jimmy doesn't move the needle all that much. Right, right. The Celtics, like, uh, what, Tatum, Kemba, Jalen Brown? Uh, it's as boring as it gets, but they're a good team. They're a great team, yeah. but they don't have— like, I was wrong about them. I was wrong about them. Uh, I like that. But, you know, Giannis would be the best, but I don't know how He's much a, he draws eyes. He doesn't draw any eyes. Yeah, I don't know. It's Milwaukee. It's like, who's watching Milwaukee? I, I think it's that coupled with, yeah, the Warriors— just falling off the map because they were a beloved team. They've been yeah. scheduled for so many games. Them plus Pelicans with Zion. Pelicans and Zion have had a lot of national TV games. Right, right. That they've had to flex out now because and, and you know and they try to flex in Sacramento with John Moran uh, or oh you mean Memphis? Uh, I'm sorry, Memphis with John Moran. And nobody's watching that. No, no, unfortunately, I think it, it, so. It's yeah. like a perfect storm of of crap and. You know, tons of people follow along on Twitter or like, a, you know, uh, do they measure when people are streaming a game on their laptop when they're watching NBA League Pass? Does that count towards ratings? Right. Like, right. I don't know. Right. Like all the different ways that people consume media now and whatnot. I think it's just a, you know, I don't know, but the NBA is definitely worried about it. That's for damn sure. How could they not be? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Look. I think out of all those things that you mentioned, uh, the one thing that seems the most difficult to fix is having the ability to schedule West Coast games in an East Coast friendly time slot. Yeah. You know, and that's, you, you need people here to go to the games, so you can't schedule them so early. Right. Like baseball does. Yeah. There are no day games, it's all at night. Uh, so it, I think that definitely when everybody floods to the West and all your marquee you know, stars, by and large, are in the right. West, it kind of hurts. And in the East, then that game between the Lakers and the Rockets starts at 10 p.m. Yeah. There's not a lot of people like, you know. Or last night's uh, Clippers-Mavericks. Right. Great game. Yeah. Unfortunate for, do you see Dwight Powell's injury? No. Ruptured Achilles. Oh, my God. You can see it ripple up his thigh, or up his calf. It's bad. Ugh. Yeah, he just... He plants and then he pushes forward with his right foot uh, from the three-point line. And as soon as he does, because I saw a slow-mo of it, you can just see it actually ripple up his calf. And you're like, oh, oh my God. Oh, man. Who's going to take over for him? Uh, I don't know. I mean, they were already kind of going to be more than likely players in free agency. This, unfortunately, makes them a little bit more urgently pushing for it because yeah. they've got a legitimate team. Hopefully they don't sacrifice too much to do it because, right. you know. Because Kristaps could maybe step into that to that spot, yeah, he's, right? he's still out right now, but he'll be back. But there's another guy where it's like, wow, man, you've been in and out of lineups now for years. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, look, for me also, um, it's that basketball for me doesn't really start after the, like until after the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's yeah. most people. Or after the All-Star game. Yeah. And then it actually picks up. I'm like, oh, I start to pay attention because you have an idea of who's in the running. Right. And it builds. I, that's why the midseason tournament... Uh, some people are saying it's a deflection from the lower ratings. They want to get people talking about other things, but it could garner interest 
before Christmas when no one's really paying attention. Yeah. Historically, no one's really been paying attention to the NBA until post Christmas, post All Star, or post, yeah, uh, All Star break type stuff. Yeah. And like, look, you know, one thing that I was thinking about, you know, when you asked me to come on the show is that I started really thinking about our predictions in the East versus the reality of the East now. Mm -hmm. And I think we were pretty close. I mean, for me, I was all, way off on two teams. Uh, you were way off on one, even though I'm on not... Philly. That was my biggest. Yeah, for me, I was way off on Boston. Okay, and I was way off on Miami. See, I like I like both those teams. Yeah, they're pretty interesting. I had Miami at six or seven. I forget. It was either six or seven, and now they're like been hanging out at two and three the entire friggin' season so far. Well, they're at, I think they're eight games back in Milwaukee. So you really have to say, okay, Milwaukee's Milwaukee's got the number one right. sealed. Which we both I think we both had Milwaukee yeah. at one. Yeah. Yeah. I talked you out of Philly at one. Right, right, to right. To put Milwaukee at one. It's just like, I don't know. There's more stability in Milwaukee. They have an identity of who they are. And now if they finish the season where they're at, like say it ended today, historically they would be one of the best teams in the the league's history just because they're crushing teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On offense so the Lakers, and defense. Yeah. yeah, it's it's pretty impressive. Uh, Lakers, it's more about health and Giannis. It's can you get Giannis more? Like, is Middleton going to show? And are they going to make a move at the trade deadline to kind of shore up, you know, this offense? Sure, uh, it would be interesting. But Miami, I mean, you're eight games back. You're, I think, you're a game to a game and a half up on Toronto at number three, uh, which you were way off on. I was way off on. Yeah, way off on. That was my biggest glaring, and I've eaten crow about that, and I'm happy to continue. Look, Look I mean, I I knew they were going to be good. I knew they were going to be good. Like. Like, I didn't think they were going to be this sturdy. They kind of remind me of, like, you know, and I think we spoke about this. They kind of remind me a little bit of that Pistons team, you know, that's, like, doesn't have a real true breakout superstar, but they play real, like, really Oh, you're tough. talking about the Billups uh, no, era no, 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 with no. Tayshaun and Rip? And no, I, I'm older, so I'm talking about the bad boys. Oh, bad? Well, they still had Zeke. They had Isaiah and Joe Dumars. Those were their two all-star, all-NBA guys. Isaiah was an all-star. Joe Dumars was an all-star, but nobody knew who the hell he was. Well, yeah, I think he only made either two or three all-stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, so, look, Toronto's looking good. So, But I didn't think Miami was going to be this good, and, and I think that— what people need to start giving props to when it comes to Miami um, is that, you know, Eric Spolstra might be the best coach in the NBA. He's in the discussion. He's in top five. Because that team doesn't belong uh, in, at the number two. Now, there's, there's a handful of coaches in the NBA that make a genuine difference. Yeah. He is one of them. It's like him, Rick Carlisle, Brad Stevens I like a lot, although he hasn't won a championship yet, but still. Uh, Pop, uh, Steve Kerr, I don't hold his G League team against him. Like, their identity was around three guys, and two of those guys are gone. I, for, that's a great point, but because I would counter that saying, I think it was three years ago, the Heat had a G League team, or like a double F team, like a really bad team, and then they went on that run after yeah. the All-Star break, where Dion Waiters was like the only guy with any kind of name producing. Yeah. And I think they won like 20 games in a row. It was obscene. Yeah, you, yeah. At post All Star, you guys went on a hell of a run with with a bunch of G League. Yeah, your you know? defense just was shutting everybody down. Hassan Whiteside looked like a a, a foundational piece. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, Dion Waiters. Look, it was a weird. It was a weird thing, and that was all Spolstra. If you put Steve Kerr on the Heat right now with the exact Heat team that Spo is coaching, I don't think they're anywhere near the second slot. I yeah, I have no idea. I I will say in in Kerr's defense. And, uh, you know, talking about that team that made the run, it was also against an East that at that point, like this year, the, this is the first time the East is matched with the West. The top six teams in each are legit, and I almost like the East so, huh? a little bit. Dude, when the Pacers are playing this well without Oladipo, and they're in the mix night in, he's, night out. He's still not back, huh? He's coming back soon. He's been relegated to their G League team and playing down there. He'll be up soon. But... So when they're still this good in churning out wins, it's super impressive. Whereas the year that you're talking about the runoff, it was Cavs and uh, or pardon me, yeah, it was Cavs and Chicago. Exactly. So it was it was top heavy with two three teams, and everybody else under that is like, I don't know what you're getting night in night out. It's nothing against you guys. Right, right. You still won the it's, games. It's Rondo. Rondo was in Chicago. I think Chicago was like the second seed that year. Well, that would have been the Rondo D Wade. Yeah. Uh, year. That's the year that the Heat went on that run. Uh, okay. And the Heat played Chicago in the playoffs. 
Uh, well, you know, look. Uh, and we lost. Yeah. We lost in seven. Uh, but at the same time, it's like uh, not, no, no team outside of the Cavs had any shot. Right, right. Really. Boston took them to seven, if that was that same year. No, no. The, that was the, Boston the year after. Year was a year after. Uh, or so maybe then, two years after. Then it was the Cavs. Right, right. And it that was, was about Cavs. it. It yeah. was the Cavs, and that was it. Uh, Atlanta. PG was still on the Pacers. So they were a threat because they had PG, right. but they had one dude. It's like, good luck to you. Right, right. PG, actually, yeah, PG played the Cavs in the first round that year. Uh, Remember, he missed that three-pointer. Oh, I don't. I'd have to go back and look yeah, at that. Yeah, up. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, PG missed that three-pointer. And ironically, during that game, they were playing that Gatorade commercial. Oh, where he never misses? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Never misses. He's super clutch. <laughs> yeah. Until the past couple of seasons, that commercial was utter bullshit. <laughs> right. Utter bullshit. Yeah, yeah. And then last year and this year, it's like, yeah, 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 no, he can make some clutch shots. Yeah, but look, man, I look forward to getting back into it. I've been following the heat, and that's about it. Um, Luca, because, you know, like uh, we talked about in our previous show, Luca's become one of my favorite players. Oh, he's great. So I think he's fascinating to follow. Um, I've I've been following a little bit. To me, the most impressive team or the biggest surprise, look, the Heat at number two is a huge surprise. But to me, another big surprise is OKC in that 6-7 spot. Like, I never thought that was going to happen. Yeah, I, thought, I thought OKC was a bottom dweller. They're at seven right now, um, just behind the Rockets. The Rockets have a hell of a schedule coming up, and OKC could easily make the jump yeah. if they continue to play the way they're playing right now. They, This is the happiest I've seen Chris Paul since New Orleans. Yeah, and like they asked him, are you willing to like forego oh, yeah, your 44? Yeah. He's like, nope. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Smart. Hell yeah, yeah, his age, who's going to pay him $45 million? Yeah, yeah. Nobody. Nobody. Hold on to that. Hold, yeah. Uh, OKC lifer. He's an OKC lifer now. They can't get rid of him. Uh, maybe in a year. Uh, right. But this season, he will be with Oklahoma City. I'll be interested, though, if they continue to make this run, whether or not they shop Gallinari and Steven Adams like they've been doing. Right. Atlanta's expressed interest in Stephen Adams. Numerous people would, you know, numerous teams rather would be interested in Gallinari. The Pelicans could be an interesting landing spot for Stephen Adams. Okay, sure. Um, but it's it's also you have 15 draft picks over the next few drafts. Why, you know, do you need, really need more assets? Because there's a point where you're Boston and you can keep drafting all these players, but there's only so many roster spots. Right. You gotta. You can't just keep acquiring assets. So why not hold on to Gallinari this one time and make a run and make everybody happy uh, that you made the playoffs and you didn't have to bottom out because you lost Westbrook and PG forced his way out and, you know, Cupcake Kevin Durant, as they like to call him, is gone and they've managed to change their identity once again with, you know, Shea Gilgis is the future of that team and he looks great. He's only progressed. Of the Nets? No, 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 on OKC. On OKC, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. Like, OKC will run out a lineup of CB3, Shea Gilgis, and Dennis Schroeder, and just like, you got three point guards out there that can right. shoot. Uh, this is super interesting. And then you put Steven Adams. They still got a power forward problem, but, and wing depth isn't their strong suit, but they've, they're have they super interesting. And, and and they have some, some, some cap now, right? They got some dollars that they can spend? Uh, I'd have to look at their cap. I haven't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's not as hamstrung as it was with PG and Westbrook. Yeah. You only have Chris Paul. And the GM of that team has always been very clever. Yeah, Sam Presti. Yeah, he's Sam, a good GM. Yeah, Sam Presti could figure it out. Um, but yeah, that that's been a surprise for me. Um, the uh, the other day I was looking through some stats and I saw that Harden went one for seventeen from three. Yeah, we'll get into uh, oh, okay, yeah, to yeah, yeah, Houston. Yeah, yeah there's what the, a, what the hell's going on there. They've been on a weird, a weird run. But back to your heat. So yeah, you're at two now. Um, yeah. Do you do you think you have in, any like genuine championship potential aspirations for mm. this season? Look, I think there was a an awesome game. I don't know if you saw it, but there was an awesome game. Maybe like uh, maybe like two weeks ago or three weeks ago or something. It was the Heat against the Sixers. Okay. That went into overtime. Okay. Um, and the Heat ended up pulling it out. Um, and, you know, this was like it had that playoff. You know how there's the, those select regular season yeah. games that have that playoff atmosphere? This had it. And it was just after Christmas. And, you know, it was teams vying for that second spot. And the Heat took it to them, you know. And, and like, look, I, I don't know how they're doing it. I don't know how they're doing it. Do, Jimmy's shooting stats are down. They're, they're as, uh, as bad as I looked it up. But, it, but I saw it. 
Oh, go ahead. But his teamwork is up. Yes. And his toughness is up. And I think his identity has bled into his teammates. Yeah. To where, you know, when they, I remember a reporter asked him a few weeks ago, what's it like to, you know, to be on a team with only one star? And he's like, oh, you're talking about Bam? Right, because <laughs> right. Adebayo's been an all star. Right. Yeah. flat out. I oh, hope he man. makes it. He he. You know, he reminds me of he reminds me of a little bit of Sean Kemp. Okay, you know, he's got like that toughness and like he's not super tall. You know, I think he's like six nine, six ten. Yeah, uh, yeah, some something along those lines. I think six ten. But, but he plays big, man, and like he, I mean, he's putting up some great offensive numbers. He's a like all the when you watch, he's like a uh, to some degree a go bear light. Because guys think twice mm-hmm. about coming into the paint. Even though Gobert is hands down the best defensive center in the league, you still see the hesitation sometimes when guys go up against Bam. And you're like, that that means something. There is no yeah. stat for that. When you see a point guard running in, they see him, and it's just like suddenly he's dribbling across the baseline yeah, in the yeah. hopes that the defense collapses on him and kick out to an open three or something. Yeah, he's tough. Yeah, he is. It's interesting. And then you got none off the scrap heap that nobody wanted. Who the hell is that guy? I have no idea. I don't know. I don't follow college anymore. But so, he's like a candidate for rookie of the year. Him I mean, and, and Harrow. I mean, Ja, ja is going to win. Ja this. is going to win. But these two guys, any other year that doesn't have a Ja Morant in it, these two guys are candidates for oh, rookie of the year. There, there would be certain years that, yeah, one hundred percent. I'd be like, yeah. I, I like everything about them. I mean, you look at Tyler and you see like I, you know, look, look. Maybe I'm being incredibly optimistic, but I see a young Clay Thompson. I'm seeing, I'm seeing like this sure. guy. Oh, he's got, dude. That dude is a killer. I have seen him yeah. shoot shots where you're like, you shouldn't. No, 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 not all. Oh. <laughs> and then he'll do it like three plays later, and just like, well, you've bought, you know, the good grace of your teammates. Yeah, and he'll drive it into the paint. Mm-hmm. You know, and he'll play a little defense you know so look i thought and i've been on this show telling you that i think uh i thought pat riley was going senile um he just didn't have it anymore but this season i've been proven so wrong by the miami heat i mean look pleasantly so but like i thought we'd be lucky to get that six spot an average six between six and eight okay all season and then like last year it comes down to the last two weeks and hopefully we sneak into that seventh spot. But right now we're the second best team in the East. Yeah, I mean it, it, it's pretty it's pretty freaking crazy. And Justice Winslow hasn't really been playing yet. Oh, he's only played I think eleven games so far. Do you trade him? I mean, you think it, like you think somebody will give you value for him? Potentially, because I mean, you know, the draft that he was in. I remember Boston offered. Yeah. Like I think it was Charlotte, something along the lines of seven picks. We should uh, yeah, yeah to yeah. move up to take that. And then they they offered the Heat the you know a number of picks to move up to try and take Justice Winslow. I think a lot of people are still high on him. Like, it'll be interesting when he comes back because there's another dude that can handle the ball and at his size. But you've only gotten 11 games at him this far thus far because I figured Dragic would be the number one yeah. trade option before the season started. But him and Jimmy seem to be thick as thieves. Like I've read a couple stories about how they bonded and they're really close and. He's coming out on the second unit and just murdering teams. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like, well, you need that spark plug off the bench, and if he's happy in that role, that's tough to find. And what's up with Waiters? Is he still on the roster? No, nah, dude, he's been he has been exiled. He is gone. But we're still paying him. Yes, you it's like still another of these guys that we're still paying twenty million dollars a year to. That is like, well, it was the, even, not even allowed in the building. The weed gummy, and he wouldn't narc out his teammate. Good for you. Right, right, you know. Right. Uh, right. so the he weed did the gummy, punishment. Really, yeah, yeah, the weed gummy. And then he, uh, shortly thereafter, he called in sick, and they he posted, I think, a, a photo to his Instagram of him on a boat. I saw a picture of him on a boat when he was supposed to be, you know, at work. And instead, he took the day off and went out in the harbor in Miami and just hung out on a yacht. And you're like, dude, you can't, you can't do that. So, so what? The heat of officially ousted him? Uh, uh, basically, he's persona non grata, and he's not around the team. That's the last I heard. So, uh, but still and, getting that. The, he's getting the, his checks. Yeah, <laughs> but the reports are he'll never play another game in the NBA again. That no team wants him now. If you can't do this in Miami, even though Miami is one of the the more strict organizations, but if you can't do this here, where you've got a green light to play and shoot, then why would we want you? Oh, man, I hope Riley can get some of that money back. I, I don't think so, unless he's violating his contract. But I'm not sure if he is, and if they're keeping him away, it's the same as like Igudala. He's staying away because he didn't want to play for a team that has no. Although my, Memphis is in the mix to make the playoffs, but I still don't know if if he wants to come back. But you know he'll be traded. Well, so so like Iguodala hasn't played. He has not played, not one single second. 
Are you serious? He's been playing golf. That's the most— uh, But he's on the Memphis roster. Yes, he is. He wanted a trade, um, and they said no problem, and they are waiting to find somebody that is willing to give them something for him, something they're holding out to hopefully get some sort of value. Uh, I think the Clippers— I had heard Dallas was interested, although now Dallas has uh, you know, reset their sights on other guys like Robert Covington and a couple others. But, yeah, Iguodala, he'll be traded. I don't think he'll play a second for Memphis, which sucks because this team is super fun and interesting. That's weird, man. That's weird that the NBA players can get away with that crap. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, when he told them when they traded for him, like, I, don't, I only want to play for a contender, so I'm either going to retire. And I, my guess is they uh, talked him out of retiring in the hopes that they could trade him to a contender. But he wants to play for one of the two L.A. teams is everything I've read. How, how, uh, how legit do you think the Heat are? Um, I don't think they can beat Milwaukee because who stops Giannis? I mean, that's your number one. Right. So I mean, look, you might be able to put Bam on John, you know, Giannis. But I still think Giannis runs right past him more right, often right, than right, not. Right, right, right. Uh, do, I, do I think you guys in a best of seven can hang with anybody in the East? Yeah, I think by and large. I think Boston would be the only yeah. team that I think would be super interesting stacked up. Toronto I want to see in the playoffs um, just because there's a difference of regular season and now, Pascal, a team is solely game planning, planning for you for seven games. So you have to figure out. But Pascal got, 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 got hurt just a few days ago, right? Uh, or Siakam did. Yeah, Siakam, uh, well, they've had tons of, I think the other day was the first time their entire starting lineup have played together in, in a while. Right. So they've had injuries galore on that team, and they've still managed to be third place in the East. Uh, but yeah, the Heat, I think they can hang with the Sixers, uh, because the Sixers don't, I don't know if they have the firepower, although they are a better defensive team to me, but they also have health issues. Yeah. And it, so, so they're, they're a second round team, realistically. Well, depending on—so if they ended up at second, second place overall, they could make the finals in the Eastern Conference. I yeah, think they could. They're not going to end up at second. I think you're right. I think the uh, the Eastern Conference finals is going to be uh, Milwaukee-Boston. That's who I'd pick right now. Yeah. Just because Tatum and Brown have been trending on a nice trajectory. Kemba looks as solid as ever. Yeah. You know, center is Daniel Theus, so they got a center problem if they got to take on Philly. But outside of Philly— there aren't many center threats in the East where you got to shut them down on the offensive or the defensive side. Yeah, but look, I mean, and you called this on on our preview show where I was being a little bit more cynical against Boston um, after losing that pariah to uh, Brooklyn. They, they 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 just turned it one eighty. Yeah, and it's all those stories are now happening in Brooklyn. It's amazing. I mean, it, this guy's just got to give it up. I mean, like, what the hell is wrong with this I don't guy? know. And he came out the other day and it said some more stuff. And you're like, dude, you have, like, te- your teammates have ears. Yeah, like, what is wrong with this guy, man? When he was like, we're one to two pieces away from being right, actual right. contenders. Right. And you're like, dude, Kevin Durant is the piece. So just shut up. Just shut up. Enjoy your money. And, and like, why does Kevin Durant kind of encourage this behavior? I mean, that's also a little bit strange. Like, it makes you look at KD differently. Because he, this is what he chose. Okay, knowing the guy as well as he does, obviously they're friends, so he knows how he is, and he must like it and be like somewhat similar. For him to choose that incredibly stoic, st- sturdy franchise with the Golden State Warriors, with professionals that are proven on the court, yeah. off the champions. court, champions, to to purposefully. Get a little bit butt hurt over some comments that Draymond Green made in one regular season game, and to have that carry with you for so long, to not get put into this situation where you have probably the biggest pain in the ass in basketball, who's completely off his rocker, um, just bringing down the whole vibe of that team. It's like, like I know Brooklyn's doing decent. I think what they're fifth or something. Nah, Brooklyn is. Eighth as of right now, I oh, think. Okay. I think the Orlando okay, so has fell. slept they over fell. them. I can tell you right now. Uh, yeah, Brooklyn is eighth. They're oh, okay. two games back of Orlando. All right, so it's like you know, last year they were like an upstart team that had that same kind of attitude that the Heat have now. Like, hey, you know, we didn't see this coming, but now that you have this guy, he hasn't really even played that much. No, he's been in and out of the lineup. He just came back, and then they uh, it didn't really affect. They continue to lose. Because I, you know, 
previously, like when you watch them last year, they're passing the ball around. It seems like everybody's playing for everybody else. And then when he shows up, it becomes the Kyrie show and the other guys. And I'm not sure how right. well Spencer Dittwitty takes to being an other guy, even though he's not really truly an alpha. And some of the others are just like, yeah, you know, you're not you're not as talented. You know that. But at yeah. the same time, it's like there's also like team. We're a team. We're a group. Yeah. Him, him and KD on paper, though, does sound very exciting. Oh, hell yeah. But it, is it going to be just him and KD and everybody else? And it's just like, I don't know, man. I'm very interested to see how that how, how all that plays out because – this offseason might be very strange in Brooklyn. Like, how many of those pieces, like Kyrie says, we need to add more pieces, but how many of these people just want to get out of there? You know, and like. And in free agency this year, they're saying, uh, you know, it's a bad year. I haven't looked at who's actually going to be a free agent because the projection is for next year when Giannis is up and a bunch of other marquee guys. Right. Like, Kawhi will be up, PG will be up. Uh, you'll have a slew of, of stars, a bevy of, you know, individuals that you can go out for. So. Everybody's holding their cap for you know uh, two seasons from now's free agency, not this upcoming's. So I don't know who. I mean, there's always going to be guys out there, and you could always make a trade, I guess. But I'm not exactly sure who you put in. The piece you're missing is Kevin Durant. Yeah. Talk to me once you get back. Hopefully, a dude that gets you know returns to being in the conversation for the best player in the world. I hope so, man. I hope so. KD made this game fun. I actually think that the simplest answer for why the NBA ratings are down. Is that that KD factor is not a part of the league? Sure. And and even back in the day when KD was 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 with OKC, it made this completely obscure Central America flyover state team a relevant part of basketball. Yeah. yeah you no longer needed to be in New York, LA, Chicago, Boston, one of the marquees. Yeah. You could have a huge national presence being in this tiny market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, and, and and the NBA misses him, you know, and and it sucks that that happened to him last finals, um, but uh, the NBA misses him, and and I'm just a little bit bummed out that he chose Kyrie over, like you said, champions. Even though Kyrie's also a yeah. champion, let's not take it away from him. But but at the same time, like LeBron did that when he went back to Cleveland, although it was you know greener pastures. But Pat Riley's assertion before that happened is you don't walk away from championship caliber. Right. And some people just have the belief of if you're a champion, then you'll you know the best players will be drawn to you because you're a champion. And sometimes guys go, nah, I want to go here for X, Y, and Z. Uh, so yeah. So, look, uh, to put a little button on the Miami Heat thing, you think right now Coach of the Year, top candidate, Spolstra? Um, let's see. Or, or, or Vogel. Vogel would be interesting. I think Nate McMillan with the Pacers would be a good choice. Um, you know, uh, uh, Nick Nurse for the Raptors, keeping them in third place. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of, I think, deserving you know, individuals this year. So, right, we'll, so see, we'll but, see. But Spolstra, if he managed to get to second, like that's super interesting. For any- I think Spolstra deserves to get a little bit more credit. Like, like, like I guess that's you know that's where I'm at because I remember not too long ago LeBron saying we got to get this idiot out of here. He doesn't know how to coach. Yeah, his first see, he does it everywhere. Yeah, as soon as he shows up, place I don't like you. Let's get you out of here. Did it with Luke Walton. Yeah, he did, tried to do it with Spolstra. Uh, you know, he's, he's got a track record of getting guys run out of town. Yeah, yeah. And, so. and look, I'm glad Riley stuck with Spolstra because I was also cynical on Spolstra in the early days. Like, who's this guy who's been with the yeah, organization? a video guy. A video guy. But, man, the, the stuff that he has done ever since LeBron left has been some of the best coaching I've seen in basketball. I'm not going to disagree, man. That yeah. guy, he puts a competitor out on that court night in, night out. Amazing. All right, so to to flash over to another team that you brought up earlier, which is the Houston Rockets, yep. and they are in a weird situation right now. They've lost four straight games, and in that, so here are the stats. I looked it up because I just after that one for seventeen that Harden went on, it's like okay, well, how's he been doing lately? So in the he shot that night of one and seventeen, he shot nine of twenty nine overall, but in the four losses, Harden is shooting thirty two point seven percent from the field. And he's shooting uh, on that's on 33 makes on 98 freaking shots, and he's shooting 17.7 percent on three on nine of 51 shooting. And then on the flip side, Westbrook's actually been playing really well. Yeah, he's shooting 60, almost 61 percent from the field, uh, and he's only taken six threes, which is good. Westbrook, you don't shoot threes well. He's, he's shooting 30 percent from three. 
And then their upcoming, so they're currently at six. They're two games up on OKC at seven. Their upcoming schedule is just brutal. So they've got Denver at home. They're at Minnesota, then at Denver, at Utah, at Portland. Back home for Dallas, Pelicans, Hornets, which maybe Pelicans, Hornets can rattle off two games, but who knows? Maybe Zion's back, and they're now a hell of a thing to contend with. Yeah. Then they go on the road again to at Lakers, at Suns, back home to Utah, and then Boston. So there's a world in which they drop down to seven and are flirting with you know, now they've got uh, other people creeping. Like, what if Memphis makes a run in that, and now they're fighting for that seventh spot overall, and Houston slips to eight? Yeah, look, I um, I don't think anybody realized, even though they were my dark horse pick, I don't think I, like anybody realized how good the Mavs were going to be. Um, I, I liked them to make the playoffs. Yeah, but, like, the Rockets, I think I was, first of all, I was very wrong on the Rockets because I said – like, I wasn't on the show, but I, I've been telling my buddies, I had the Rockets as maybe the best record in the West. I thought, honestly, they were going to be number two because yeah. James Harden complained all offseason about not winning last year's MVP because saying, well, because we started slow, the narrative for Giannis became X, and I could never overcome that narrative. So you read into that going, okay, so you're going to do everything in your power to not start slow and create the narrative for you to win another MVP. So I figured they were going to come out guns a-blazing from day one, and they've been up and down and up and down, and some nights they look like killers, and other nights they just look like this team that can't shoot. What is it? Is it, is it, is it still losing Trevor Ariza and having that like 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 that bully in there, that, that, well, that enforcer? I think it's when an entire offense is designed around one individual you know, and asking – the Daryl Morey style of it's all three and key. We don't shoot anything outside of the lane or threes. And your best guy has a night where he shoots one for 17. That's brutal. Yeah. You miss 16 threes. I mean, that's that that kills your team. And if you're doing that, you know, consecutively an hour of four games where you're shooting 17% and the offense is designed for you to just jack shots from three, not to say jack is and you can't make them. It's, I think he's at 36% overall for the season from three. So for a volume shooter, that's pretty good. Um, that's damn good, actually. If he, if he could get that up to 40, it'd be elite. God damn. Uh, shooting that much. But, yeah, I mean, he's attempting something like 12 to 14 threes on average a game. It's So if you're going to miss 90% of those, that's you're, that, it's going to be tough for your team to dig out of that hole. And, like, here I'm looking at Westbrook. Westbrook is still at 25, 8, and 7. I mean, like. He's put it up. It just, like, in this four-game stretch, shying away from shooting threes, I think, is the best thing for him. Uh, shoot all the twos, you know, drive to the basket, do all your Westbrookian things, and just don't shoot threes because you're one of the worst statistical three-point shooters in the history of the league for a guy that attempts as many as you do over the course of a season. But, it, I mean, to me, I look at this and go, okay, so. So what if they go through this run and they drop down to seven or they drop down to eight, something like that, and the playoffs start and they're at seven or eight. Yeah, they're in the luxury tax. They have no flexibility going forward. Daryl Morey's job is on the line unofficially because of the, the China tweets, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Hong Kong tweets. They could beat the Lakers, though. I don't think so. In a seven-game series? I don't think so. I think there are other teams that they could you know line up against, and if they're just shooting hot, sure. But I don't think they could take the Lakers, the Clippers— if Utah continues to play on I mean, this if trajectory. Clint, if Clint Capella is healthy and playing strong, Russ is being Russ and Harden is being Harden, yeah, that, the, that, that's a pretty good three. But you, then you need P.J. Tucker to hit his corner threes, which he does, but yeah. you need him to do it at a really good clip. Eric Gordon you need off the bench to be lights out. You need Austin Rivers to actually not be Austin Rivers and be a better version of himself. Uh, Daniel House, and then after that, like it gets thinner and thinner. Tyson Chandler doesn't get any real run. Right, right, right. Like they don't have much. They have the not very deep. You're right. Yeah, they have almost all their cap tied up into four guys, and just like I don't know what you do at that point. It, it, uh, their best trade asset would be James Harden. Jesus, you're not going to compete. You can't win a champ if you don't make the finals this year. It's not like next year is going to get easier. You're right. just another year older, and you can't make. You don't have much flexibility. Although, if anybody could do it, it'd be either Daryl Morey or Sam Presti. Yeah, look, and, and that goes back to my first question about the twenty-eight percent drop in viewership. Is like, is that sort of lack of parity or that predictability around who's good and who isn't also hurting the league? 
because everybody's like, oh, the regular season isn't as interesting as it used to be. It could be. There's a there's a lot of people that feel that because all teams now kind of shoot a volume threes, the people are like, meh, you know, eh, unless you're Steph Curry, I don't care type of thing because it's not exciting. Right. Uh, whereas I'm the inverse. It's just like that means any team is in it at all times. So you can have these huge comebacks, and that happens on the regular. And it's, it's fun to watch. Right. But me personally, like I've watched, I don't know, maybe eight or nine Rocket games this year. And I've seen some where they are – so much fun to watch. And it's games where, you know, Harden isn't goading players into fouling him, and I don't have to watch him shoot 15 free throws. Right, right. And you're like, okay, man, I don't I don't mind you crab dribbling at the top when you're trying to, to to be a surgeon and cut through this defense. But it's when you're just running into dudes and whatnot, it's like, all right, this is boring to watch. And I imagine the casual fan is like, well, why do I want to watch a dude crab dribble right. for 18 seconds of a shot clock just to hoist a three? Yeah, so it's like if you're not like a diehard fan of a team, like look, I still watch the Miami Heat games uh, when I get you know when I get the chance, and that'll pick up after the Super Bowl a lot more. But unless you have that passion for a specific team, this season has been tough to like get those must see TV type games on on TNT and all that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, those matchups just aren't there. Like even when you get a game, uh, Lakers Nuggets. It's like I think the Nuggets are you know uh, second second in the in the yeah, West. Yeah, they're second in the West. Those Actually, games aren't even that exciting. Start? Like like the Lakers. They're third. Team, they're third in the West after uh, Clippers winning. The it last seems night. like the Lakers have their number. It seems like the Nuggets when they show up against the Lakers are just the old school Nuggets. I well the Nuggets, I think it would it would behoove them to make a trade because they just have too many good players. Mm. They don't have enough minutes, and now with Michael Porter Jr. just. Looking amazing, looking like the projected top three to potentially number one overall pick right. that they stole late in that first round after the Clippers took two back to back point guards, Shea Gilgis and with Jerome Robinson. Sure. They could have gotten with the Jerome Robinson. Now you got this super interesting. But I think that they make some sort of trade to to kind of rejigger their identity a little bit. It makes sense just because, dude, you've got expiring contracts. You've got all these, you know, you need to find more minutes for Michael Porter Jr. because that guy looks legit. Mm. But yeah, against the Lakers, who doesn't favor the Lakers? You got LeBron, you got AD. Although they need more shooting, I think. To yeah, be... but AD look, AD has been non-committal about re-signing. He's been a little bit injury prone in the last few weeks. They they don't look as good without him. You know, Boston st- stuck it to them. Uh, Orlando kind of hit him over the head a little bit. Like I, I think this week. Um, yeah, that was an interesting game. If you don't got AD, still though, Orlando played. Insanely well, Marco yeah. Fultz was getting to the hoop. Right, which I'm happy for Marco. Me too. I'm it's, happy for. Him. It's nice I'm to see that he, you know, just getting out of Philly and whatnot. It really helped. Yeah, your and progression. Look, Florida, no tax. It's fun down there. You got sure. You got Disney World around the corner. Live you know? it up. But uh, yeah, um, the Lakers without AD look a lot like um, the Lakers did last season. Okay, you know so. You know, look, AD seems like he's going to be fine, even though he's, you know, his, what is it, his back has been hurting. And he's always got a little he's something. Got, he's got a little something. But, look, there's a lot of basketball left to play. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, like, like, how many games are we in right now? Uh, I think most teams have played 43 games. Okay, so we're at, we're, we're at the halfway point. Yeah, we're a shade over halfway. Yeah, yeah. And, and things are going to start, you know, cleaning up and— I hope that there's a big trade, man, because the NBA needs some kind of kick in the ass. I don't know that there's going to be the huge marquee, like who's the big name? We are like Kevin Love wants out, but is, does right. do people care? Yeah, maybe send Kevin Love to Utah or something. Make Utah a little bit because even when you see the Lakers play Utah, and the Lakers have AD and LeBron, and uh, Rondo's playing well, and this you know this ball dude is playing well. Um, you know, sorry to call him bald, dude, but like uh, um, for the Lakers, Carson, what's his name? Uh, oh, Caruso, Caruso, yeah, 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 dude, he needs to shave his head. <laughs> yeah, Caruso, he really does. Caruso's out there. They they kick the ass of the Utah Jazz. Like like it doesn't seem does it... well, but since Mike Conley went down, the the Jazz have kind of changed their identity. They put Ingles into the starting lineup, and since then, man, he has been shooting the lights out right, from right. three. Just it's been phenomenal to watch, and then they've been slowly reintegrating Mike Conley back in. So I think they've figured out. 
kind of what they do. It's what Utah does almost every season, though. They start slow as shit, and then they figure it out. Yeah. And then the second half post-All-Star, they're one of the best teams. And my guess is post-All-Star, just like the past few years, they're going to be the best defensive team in the league. Uh, and then when you have Bogdanovich plus Ingles being able to right. light up from three, they're going to be super Because, like, look, and I could be wrong about this, but it seems like all season when I've been looking at the standings, you, you have Lakers, you have Jazz, you have Nuggets, and you have Clippers. And the Clippers have been happy at that fourth spot. You know, it seems like they're okay there. Mm-hmm. You know, they've beat the Lakers twice head-to-head. And it seems like the Clippers know how to step up for the big games. Like, if they got to win a game, they, they can win the game. True. Um, I don't believe in Utah, and I don't believe in, in the Nuggets. Um, but I think um, – I still think that the Clippers are a far better team than the Lakers – um, they have the depth yeah. that the Lakers are lacking. Lakers, top end, LeBron and AD, it's tough to beat that. But then once you get below that, yeah, it's Caruso, that, it's KCP, it's Danny Green, it's you know, JaVale they're playing, McGee. They're playing soon, the Clips and the, and the Lakers. I think they're playing like in a, like, like in a week or something. Okay. Or, or a week I'd have to yeah, look at schedules. I don't yeah, know off the yeah, top yeah. of my head. It's going to be the third time they play, and I'm very interested to see this game because I – I, I finally want to see in full strength AD and LeBron against uh, PG thirteen and Kawhi. Like, like really, really at full strength. Because like mm-hmm. in the last game, I'm not even sure if Paul, if a PG even played. I think he played a little bit. I can't remember. The Christmas to be perfectly game. honest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I can't remember either. But like that to me is still the West, and it's probably still the championship because. I still think Giannis needs to get a little bit more of that playoff, like strength under his legs. You know, it's we'll see. I mean, last year they were the best team in the East, and then they struggled. You know, once it came down to it in the the, yeah. the Eastern Conference, uh, in the playoffs, will this year be any different? I have no idea because yeah. you would think losing Brogdon would be a, a hell of a detriment to him. And uh, I don't know. They're churning right along, so. All right, let's yeah. close with yeah. one of the more, uh, I guess, depressing oh, stories man. we've seen. I sent you the clip of Delonte West. Oh man! Of so he got into some sort of fight in the middle of the road with another with a homeless person, and uh, there's a second clip of him. I mean, just just getting beat over and over, and then he's in cuffs on the side of the road. There, what is he homeless now? Or? There were reports from a few years ago. I remember when it came out that he was homeless. Like uh, somebody saw him in the parking lot of. Uh, McDonald's or something like that. Uh, last team he played for was for the Mavs, right? Yeah, 2012, I think, was the last time he played in the NBA. And then he played overseas somewhere for a short time, but God, 2012. Didn't save his money, Didn't wasn't smart with his finances. I don't know, because he has a family. So he's got a wife and child, or maybe they're divorced now. So maybe they have all the money, and he's just kind of route roaming. Oh, man. And you, you see it, and you're like, man, someone should do... Something, but I I don't know what when you watch it because it's not the NBA's, you know, problem so to speak. No, but uh, okay, so maybe the players' association. You can't really blame CTE, right? Because you don't got those kind of head yeah. concussions. No, he's it. got mental, you know, health issues of some kind. Because he looks, look, I, and pardon my French, but he looks cracked out. Oh, he does. He looks. I mean, his eyes are wild when he's handcuffed, sitting on the side of the the street. Yeah, I mean, he looks like he's been on some heavy duty drugs. Yeah, or just the brain chemistry is. Just, you know, completely imbalanced, and he is, you know, his a- eyes are dancing around, and he's just screaming. You know, they ask him a simple question, and just making nonsensical answers. Well, was that, that a cop beating his ass on the side no, of the road? No, it was another homeless dude. Just another homeless guy. Yeah. Apparently, the thank, re- thank, thank God, I thought it was a cop doing it. I was like, oh, this is not good. No, no, no. So th- there have been reports that the Players Association, their uh, Veterans Council or whatever, uh, going to reach out and try and set something up. And the league instituted, after Kevin Love put out his Players' mm. Tribune story about his mental health issues, and then DeMar DeRozan chimed yeah. in. The episode that LeBron was, uh, like, somehow missing from, which I didn't never understood. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. The, the, oh, I'm sorry, not the Players' Tribune. I'm talking about the shop. Oh, the shop? When Kevin oh, yeah, Love, yeah, yeah. When Kevin Love came, came on the shop to talk about his mental illness situation, that was, I think that's the only episode LeBron wasn't in on. Okay, I knew that he wasn't in, but in that one, but I've never seen any of them. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, I've yeah. seen clips, but I've never sat down to watch. Yes, yeah, the full. only one that he, that 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 he wasn't in was the one that Kevin Love showed up. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's, that's like keeping him out of the Instagram <laughs> posts from <laughs> right. back in the day. But yeah, so the the league is instituted. So now all teams are required to have a psychiatrist on retainer, and they oh, have really? yeah. Okay. The, that's, the, that's interesting. The Players Association has a dedicated website to to like that's for players only, where you can reach out to. Uh, mental health professionals in all the various cities, and it's not tied to the league or anything else. You can go seek someone out mm. that has the right accreditation and all that. But do they, you know, my guess is this will provoke them to then create something for former players. But you see it and you're like, man, my heart goes out too. Oh, man. That's brutal. It's one thing if a guy blows his money and be like, well, you were an idiot with your finances. They have. But yeah, it seems like a total breakdown. Yeah, this seems like something completely different. Yeah, this seems like a complete total breakdown. And I, I, I remember him particularly well because I believe he was on that team that beat my Heat uh, in six um, okay. to claim uh, the world championship uh, when the Mavs beat the beat the Heat. Oh, in 2012. In 2012. Okay. I think he was on that team. Okay. My yeah. Uh, my fondest recollection of him is the stories that he may or may not have slept with LeBron's mom, and that was That's one it. of the things That's that helped it. get LeBron go. Yeah, you know yeah. what? I'm done with this effing town. And just to leave. And you're like, wow, this is really weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that him? Delonte West, yes, was rumored to have slept with LeBron's mom. Yeah. And if, yeah, it's pro, yeah. I mean. God, from from that to what, you know, to that, it's that's, oh, quite, yeah. that's quite the fault. It is. It's. I mean, because there's been uh, numerous documentaries over the years of, of players blowing their money and how does this happen and whatnot. And now every major league has... When rookies get drafted, you go through a process of learning about finances and protect but, your money. Look, not, you know, not to be too conspiratorial, but if what you're saying is true, and if LeBron was as angry about the situation as was reported, because I do remember that mm -hmm. story, I could see a situation where LeBron is, you know, saying it's either, you know, you're either with us or you're with the, uh, you know, or you're with the, uh, you know, with them. You know, so it's like either me or him. If you ever do any kind of work with him, uh, you know, you won't be oh, working yeah. with me. But well, what team is going to choose Delonte West? Right. In their right mind. If they're going, well, uh, the, the, the scales of justice tip very heavily right, but in I'm one favor. I'm saying, like, without saying it, I'm saying, was there a black uh, listing? Was there some, um, no, some, I mean, some non gratis list? That LeBron kind of said, "Hey, if you do business with with Delonte West, you're then you get automatically on my shit list," and then kind of like the whole NBA canceled in it, around him. It could be, and then fast forward to him underneath the bridge getting his ass kicked. Why well, also think the smoking crack? Do you have much recollection of Delonte West lighting the league up? No, not at all. I mean, he was a role player. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you got to look him up to even remember what his numbers were like. Or, yeah. I think he played six years in the league. The average is four. So he's an average player that got to make it to the world's greatest basketball league, and yeah. it happens to a lot. Eventually, and it's I just think like, he played on a championship team with, with the Mavs, even though I'm not 100% sure about that, but I think he played on that championship team. Um, Did he? Or, well, or, 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 I know he I was crazy? cut. I know he was cut by them. Um, Delonte, what, I, because, because I remember him with the, with the Mavs. Am I... Am I wrong about that? Oh, he was definitely on the Mavs, without a doubt. Um, yeah, he was on that Mavs team that won the ch that won the championship. No. Um, yeah, but he was cut from the team October. Or he was waived rather October 29th of so, 2012. So he was on the team, but he didn't make it to the to to the actual finals. Let me see. Yeah, because you guys would have won, or the Heat would have won 2011-12. Against the OKC. So he signed with them in December of 11, and then oh, was okay, cut okay. by them the following preseason, the end of preseason, was waived by them. Okay, so the year before when we lost to the Cavs, he wasn't even on the team. No. I mean, when, when we lost to the Mavs. Yeah, with the Mavs, no, yeah, he was not yeah. on that team. Gotcha. Look, the bottom line is, man, is that it's like... It's it's funny when you look at somebody and you think, wow, these people are rich. They you know they have it all. They get to play a sport for their living, and like, you know, I'm so jealous of their life. 
and then you never know what it's like on the other side. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, I mean, you know, how many great famous people do we know? Like a you know Junior Seau and uh, yeah exactly that you know it's like it's just sometimes it's it's not all you know roses on the other side also you know life is tough yeah uh, when you have this large a pool of individuals there's going to be you know some who excel in the environment and others it doesn't the environment makes no difference and they are the same and they carry those things with them and you know it it's just kind of surprising on some level that there haven't been more players whether it's NFL. Uh, NBA or MLB mm-hmm. that we've seen stories like this about. Now, I mean, you have, but to see the video in today's day and age, you would think that this would crop up more often and see it. It's, it's harrowing. So hopefully he gets the help that he needs. I know that the Players Association and former teammates, former teams have reached out to him. Uh, there was a, a tweet from Shams that Danny Ainge uh, had offered him a scouting job not in the not-too-distant past. Wow. Yeah, and just like there have been teams that have tried to reach out and help, and for whatever reason he hasn't managed to be able to get you know his act together. Uh, so hopefully he gets the the help that he needs, and uh, things take a turn for Shan or for uh, for Delante. And I think we'll call it the, there this week for dimes. Um, yeah. I, if you get a chance, enjoy that Zion game tonight. I'll be oh, trying man. to tune in myself. I mean, look, that's the beautiful thing about Zion. Like John Moran can sell a ticket. Exactly, but, Zion, but Zion can, can. But Zion, for whatever reason, he's got that Magic Johnson smile. He can, he can sell. He can put people in the seats. Yeah, my so, parents know who he is, and they couldn't tell you. They couldn't pick John Morant out of a lineup of one. Yeah. So. Wow. Your parents know who Zion is, huh? Everybody knows who Zion is. Right, right, right. I mean, he's just—he was electric in college. His name is Zion, so you're automatically like, what the. Yeah. So he gets, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he gets drawn in. And I hope he plays well, man. Like I'm very. I'm very worried about it. He's got way too much torque. He's got way too much weight. Um, his game is that Sean Kemp, uh, Charles Barkley, pound it on you, jump all over the place, super physical. And if he's anything less than that, he's just not that good of a player. So Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining me. I oh, appreciate thank you, it. Man. Thank you. Uh, where can people find you? Um, at Mark Fernandez here on Collider and all that stuff. There you go. You can find me at Matt Knows. Please uh, make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, leave a rating. Uh, let us know what you think of the show. Hit us up on uh, Twitter. Uh, and I think that is it for this week on Dropping Dimes. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week. Adios.